Hey guys, welcome back to another Mirage Guide. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on air to air, so let's go right into it by covering the radar. Let's go over the controls real quick. So, radar range increase, that we can push the radar out, see what's more in front of us. Uh, decrease. Uh, radar antenna down, that we can depress the antenna and look down. Uh, antenna up, that we can raise antenna, see what's above us. TDC depress, lock target, pretty self explanatory. Weapon system command depress, that's how you unlock a target. Nozzle steering, IFF, and tear gate. So we got IFF, what's on our radar. The axis. All right, so you want a TDC slew horizontal and TDC slew vertical. Here's my curves if you guys just want to uh, copy those. So that's a horizontal. And there's my vertical. All right, so. If you don't have uh, a HOTAS or enough like switches to bind them, th your controls for your radar is on the left side in the throttle, same area as your throttle. So a big knob right here is your power knob, so off, warm up, standby, emit. If you don't like the cone style uh, radar, you can switch it to a B-scope, which is like the same as a western style. style. Right here is how you can adjust your, uh, your altitude viewing on your TDC. I don't mess with that at all, so I just leave it. Right here's your bar, so how fast your, uh, your radar is scanning. So one bar, two bar, three, or four bar. By default, it's on four. Right here's your uh, frequency. Uh, by default, uh, your radar scans at a high rate, so I just leave it as high, or at high as well. Right here is uh, how to increase and decrease your range. Then here's your uh, radar azimuth, so pretty much with the scan zone. So right, by default, it's on 60, 30, 15. Now I leave mine on 60, but if you're flying with like a wingman and he's on to your right, you got you can scan left and he can scan right, or say AWAS gives you there's a contact to the left side, so you can focus more of your radar energy right there, so you get better uh, a better read on what it is. But normally I just leave it on 60. All right, so let's go over the radar itself or the radar display itself. Bottom right is your power switch. Flip it up to turn it on. Right here's your brightness settings. Uh, so if you're flying at night, it's a pretty bright display, so you can turn it down. Uh, it's just a side note. If you have your VTV viewport selected right here, that also selects the brightness settings on that. All right, so let's look at the actual display. Top to, top to bottom. So this solid bar right here is your, uh, where your radar is scanning at. So it's 60 degree azimuth, 40 miles out. Uh, this little toggle is representing where your radar is currently sweeping. Uh, HFR, like I said earlier, is your default scan rate or your uh, radar's default frequency. Right here is your TDC. Left side is your uh, distance, right side is your altitude. So right now we're 30 miles out of 40 miles. Uh, altitude is 30,000 feet high, 6,000 feet low. Obviously you adjust that by uh, raising or depressing your antenna. We'll come back to him in a second. These two bars are representing your artificial horizon. This is representing your plane. So if your head's down and you're in a roll while using your radar, uh, this will represent where the horizon's at while your plane or and where your plane's in correlation to that. Left side is your um, where your radar's elevation's at. So 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees. Obviously uh, negative down here. So the four is representing your bars uh, that you're scanning at. So we're scanning at four bars. It was uh, demonstrate the elevation right now. So lowering it, raising it, obviously you can see the elevation changing. All right, and then bottom left corner, uh, I really don't understand how this works, but this is like, it's not your waypoints, but it's in correlation to your airplane. So double zero is representing your airplane, 25 is representing the bearing from your TDC, 175 is representing distance from your TDC in correlation to your your airplane and then uh, this is your heading tape so right now we're roughly 174 173 degrees uh, right here is uh, your speed so we're going 425 knots at uh, 0.87 Mach our altitude is uh, 17,900 feet let's confirm yep alright and then here we got PID, uh, PID, and then PIC. So PID is TWS and PIC is a uh, single target track. So think of it as a soft lock versus a hard lock. Oh, all right, so this V right here uh, is a hostile contact. 
So we don't know if he's friendly or not. If he comes back an IFF with a diamond in the middle, that means he's a friendly. So it's IFF him right now, which is right here. All right, so he came back with nothing, so he's a hostile. The 1.8 is indicating our closure speed between each other, so we're closing at, in at each other at 1.8 Mach. All right, so like I said, PID is your uh, TWS. Think of it as a soft lock. We're locking him. He doesn't know it, but we're getting information from him. So he's roughly at a mock of speed. His heading is 338. Uh, the closure rate between us is uh, 1,126. Uh, his altitude is 16,200 feet. Now, if we hard lock him, he's going to know that we're hard locking him. We're going to get uh, what he is. So there we are. He's a MiG-29. All right, so that's uh, pretty much an overview of uh, the radar. All right, next we'll go over sensors. See you on that one. Okay, for this part of the video, we're going to be going over the Mirage sensors, just as in board side, vertical scan, horizontal scan, that kind of stuff. So let's look at the controls first. Weapon system command forward. Uh, this is toggles between your board side and your vertical scan. Weapon system command aft. This is your horizontal scan. Nav update slash magic unlock. Your magic has its own uh, special scan. This is one of them. And then weapon system command depress. This gets you out of any uh, sensor you're in and puts your HUD back in the navigation mode. Uh, before we actually get into it, I just want to clarify that the 530 and Magic have different kind of sensors. So, for example, the 530 has bore sight but does not have vertical scan, while the Magic has bore sight but does have vertical scan. All right, so let's get into it. 530 is uh, selected, so now we have bore sight. So bore sight scans 3 degrees wide and 3 degrees tall. I would said it doesn't have vertical scan, so all you have to do is push up again. And now you have a special mode selected, which is SVI. Uh, think of this as another bore sight, but it's a little bit bigger. So you got 20 degrees wide and 20 degrees tall. Horizontal scan is selected now. Uh, so this is 30 degrees wide and then 3 degrees tall. Magic selected. Foresight, again, 3 degrees wide, 3 degrees tall. So we got vertical scan now. So vertical scan is 60 degrees tall and 3 degrees wide. How this works, it points negative 10 degrees down and 50 degrees up. So you're scanning a little bit below your plane, but you're scanning mostly up. All right, so let's select vertical wide now. And by doing that, you have to actually click on it. So magic says MAV. And the way you know it's selected, you got magic, and then you got the world's online here. So uh, vertical wide scans 20 degrees wide and 40 degrees tall. Get out of that. Now this is a... Vert, vertical narrow. This is one of the magic special sensors or scans. So this is six degrees wide and six degrees tall. You can also put different sensors in the middle of it and it actually works. All right, and then let me get out of that. Now we got a horizontal scan. This is a little bit different from the 530. The 530 was 20, or sorry, 530 was 30 degrees wide and 30 or three degrees tall. But now, with the magic selected, it is 40 degrees wide and 15 degrees tall. Also, uh, if you don't have, say you don't have like time to select a sensor, if you get a target within this crosshair, it'll automatically uh, uh, slay the magic to the target. And you can also use uh, the sensors for your cannon to get a radar lock as well. All right, catch you on the next one. Alright, for this portion, this is going to be very quick. We're going to go over your weapons armament panel and how to select which weapon you want to fire, uh, like left side or right side. So let's look at the controls. Alright, so Source 2, that selects your uh, your Super 530. Then CNN Magic selects your uh, your Magics, obviously. And then also, if you want to do this now, uh, CNN AA -A Gun is your, uh, your gun selection. Alright, so you don't have... 
you don't have a hotas to bind those or you don't have enough keys to bind them right here is how you select them so magic and then 530 pretty self-explanatory and then over here is how you would arm them or not arm them but uh, select what station you want to fire them from alright so uh, in the middle is uh, the plane doesn't automatically but if you want to say fire your left missile over your right missile all you have to do is click it to the left and say you want to fire your right to bring it to your right this works for both missiles so say you have your 530 selected you can do that if you have your magic selected you can do that so if you want to keep an auto go for it I mostly keep mine in auto as well and then right here this is your magic and then your missile so your 530 P is indicating that they're warmed up but when you take off uh, you want to select it and the flashing P means they're warming up and then like I said when they're solid that means they're warm alright that covers this portion Later. All right, for this portion of the video, we're going to be going over uh, the weapons. So first thing we're going to go over is the Super 530, which is on two stations only. Uh, some stats about it. It is a Fox 1. Uh, it's comparable to an AIM-7 Sparrow. If you're at sea level, so below 10,000 feet, uh, you're mostly going to get a 10 nautical mile, 10 nautical miles out of this missile. Maybe a little bit more, depends on your speed. Uh, then if you have 40,000 feet, you could get 23 nautical miles, maybe a little bit more, depending on your speed, uh, depending on how how defensive the other target is. Uh, yeah, so let's get into it. All right, we got the target locked. 530 selected. It's flashing because it's on safe. Now it's on fire, ready to go. All right, let's pause this and pause the track IR. All right, so what we got going on right now on the HUD. So 530 is selected. Uh, right here's our range bars. Actually, let's do it again. So 530 selected. Uh, down here, is our missiles are selected as well. G's for left, deltas for right. Uh, the time above them is a countdown timer. Uh, obviously, when the missiles in the air, will give you a faster countdown. All right. So what we actually have going on? This is him locked up. And then uh, this little square. Think of that as a lead. So you want to put that square inside the circle. That way, your plane has the best lead to get it. Uh, a higher probable chance of impact. Right here's our range bar. Uh, so this first tick right here, this is when we can actually engage. The second tick is uh, what I wait for. This is pretty much going to be the no escape zone. So like, you're going to get the kill unless he says notches at the very last second. Then right here's our closure rate between each other. All right, so let's get into it. Alright, so as you saw, now we're on the second uh, tick. We have the double circle now. That also means that we're ready, or that's just giving the indication that we're ready for the ultimate uh, shot. Fox 1. Again, it's a Fox 1, so you gotta maintain lock until impact. Alright, let's go over the magics next. Alright, for this portion of the video, we're going to be going over the uh, Raj's Fox 2, which is the magic. Here we can select four of them. Station is 9, 8, 2, and 1. Alright, so like I said, uh, this is the Mirage's Fox 2. It's comparable to an AIM-9M. Uh, in my opinion, I think in terms of maneuverability, this is almost as good as an AIM-9X. Obviously, the Mirage doesn't have a HMD, so we can't look around and get like boresight people or get a high angle boresight and get some shots like that. But in terms of maneuverability, it's pretty good. Um, you get a kill from anywhere from point blank up to 8 nautical miles, depending on speed and altitude, of course. But yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, magic is selected. It's flashing because the safety's on. Let's turn that off. Uh, I'm not going to use any sensors. I'm going to try to get them with actual crosshair or to demonstrate that it does work, as you just saw. 
merge. All right, now I'm going to use vertical scan. Got him. Use a triangle, so we're good to shoot. That's a splash. All right, see you on the next one, which will be guns. Before we get started, uh, a little bit of cockpit orientation and FOI. So the Mirage has two main safeties, so the master sa or master arm switch right here. And then when you're about to use your gun, your gun has its own safety, so uh, make sure you flip that up. A lot of people forget about it, including me. Going to pause right here. All right, so what we have on our screen is uh, symbology. So this is what you, the symbology will look like if you don't have a radar lock. Uh, so the top line is 300 meters. The bottom line is indicating 600 meters. And since we're here, uh, the bottom numbers, that's indicating your, your gun or your round count since the Mirage does have dual 30 millimeter cannons. So 125 per side. And the rounds are, uh, like I said, 30 millimeter and they're also explosive. So they pretty much wreck whatever, whatever you want to shoot at. All right, let's go. Turn that down. Okay, we got him a vertical scan. Pause track IR right here. All right, so now you actually see our radar symbology. Uh, so if you remember anything from my, or if you watched my air to ground guide, so the symbology is pretty much the same. Uh, so it's a circle that winds down, and the tick marks indicate uh, ranges. So the top one is, I believe, 2,400 meters. Left is 1,800 meters. Uh, 12 o'clock is 1,200 meters, and then right is 600 meters. The closer you get, obviously, it winds down more. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory from there. Uh, a lot of people complain about the Mirage's uh, gun reticle because you have to pull such a lead, but that's because the guns are underneath the plane, and obviously you got to pull a lead to get the guns on target. But once you fly the Mirage, it's actually not that bad. So, yeah, let's, let's go at it. See, pretty easy. And then let's demonstrate those explosive rounds. Now it says watch. Any second now. There we go. Alright, well, that finishes up the quick guide. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Later.